Today we're here at the Union Street Gallery and we're coming to visit one of our favorite artists, Jean Lewis. Hi Jean, how are you? Hi Mary, welcome to my studio space. Thank you, how long have you been here? I've only been here a year. I had a previous studio in my home. This is so much nicer, more spacious get to show my work on the walls and um, just be creative with my two studio partners. What a difference. It really has. Been. Who are your partners? Do we know them? Yes, they're both the Marys, Mary Kay and Mary Ann. <laughs> <laughs> and so all three of you are in our art fair, correct? We are all in the art fair, right? We are all three pastel artists. And um, I started working with Mary Kay after I retired got into pastels big time and that is where I am now. I don't look back. It is my primary and only medium and I love working with it. And as you can see on the walls, I have a wall of African children and some adults. That is my focus, that is my concentration. And I've always liked working with figures and portraits, but when I found that one of my friends she and her husband own a nonprofit and they work out of African countries and actually they have offices uh, all over the world actually, wherever there's need and we know there's lots of need. They came, she came home and she had some photos of one of their trips from Mali. And I looked at the pictures and she said, if you like them, take one or two. And I did and it was just an eye opener. It was like an epiphany, this is what I need to do. Really? And, That's interesting. Um, so I have worked with the figures, the portraits and the things that she would bring home, the uh, photos, and some of those are from there. But the big thing was that last fall she asked me, we're going to Africa, would you like to go? <laughs> would I like to go? <laughs> Did you have to think very long about that? A nanosecond. <laughs> <laughs> and so between October and May, the planning of it and getting ready with the vaccines and just everything because she had everything laid out. There were six of us who were invited. I was the only artist. I had a mission and that was to take my own photos. Donna was very good. That's the woman I'm referring to. She was very good with the photos, but to actually talk to people and uh, ask them about their life and you know just notice what's going on with them as I'm with them and the time I'm with them. I got a lot of good pictures. And so, hey, why don't you come over and see what I'm working on now? Okay. I just finished one picture, pastel piece, this one here. And it was a woman who walked out of her little house and sat in that purple chair. I saw her from our bus as we were traveling through Ghana and um, she sat in the chair like she was taking a break. And over there on the little basket thing there, there was some white bags and I'm not sure what she had, but a lot of the people sell during the day in the traffic down the streets and that is how they sustain their lives. So she was sitting there in the chair and I didn't notice this until this one point I'm going to tell you now until I got the photo back. Ghana has three top causes for death. The first one is malaria. I hear about that. I heard about that all the time. The second one was breast cancer. And the third one was prostate cancer. When I look closely, this woman has no right breast. I see. And you're right, unless you really look unless for it, you, you really, probably you would not notice it. But she has no right breast. And I'm thinking that she was a breast cancer survivor. So she's sitting outside of her house and I got three shots, very good ones. That's the first one I got and I tried to be very close to the original for the realistic part of it. But I'm doing a second one because I thought all three shots were really good, all three picks. And this is the one I started and uh, I did, as you can see, here is the photo here. And I started with the background laying in uh, underpainting last time and today I, I got quite far today, actually, um, starting on, you know, blocking in all the things that need, the layers that are required in order to make a pastel painting work. And that orange underneath you see, that that was the undercolor. And mm -hmm. her dress, of course, is like a turquoise, uh, turquoise blue. And um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go completely like the picture or do something even a little bit more different since I'm approaching it differently. But um, this is going to be looser, 
and the background will not have her house like the first picture. I'm gonna see, just play around with it and see what happens. It's amazing to look at the picture and then at the, you are painting and how yeah. spot on you are. Well, it's, she's gonna move around a lot. <laughs> this, this was just like the first layer today. I, it, was a, it was a quick block in of what I wanted to do. Uh, come over here and um, this is the board I put up because I wanted to really let visitors to my studio space see how I was treated in Ghana. And this was one of the things that was presented to us. A committee of people had gotten together and they put together a welcoming uh, ceremony of sorts. When we went, when the bus pulled up, there were dancers outside and they took us inside and there were children and adults and they sat us at a table at, at the front of the place and uh, they laid all these gifts in front of us, handmade soaps that they had made. Um, there was fabrics and then this was handmade. Each one of us got one of those, the greetings from Ghana. And so uh, I put the one with the picture here with the two elders because I just, that's one of my favorite pictures from. One little thing that was so funny, it just gets you in the spirit of the traditional and then you see that this elder has a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, every picture, when I see it later, I notice something. Over there it was, you know, the breast cancer. Uh -huh. And over here was that. So that's the phone of photography. You get, to get a chance to see later on what's going on. And these are just sketches that I've made. These are from the most recent with the woman over there. And this is from a painting I sold last year. Uh, and it was uh, in Mali, I believe it was. Yeah. Okay, so when you go to places like this, do you have to ask for permission to use their photos and put them into a painting or how does that work? Well, I did some like the woman there where I was on the bus. Now, because I was on the bus, I didn't ask the driver to pull over and let me get <laughs> permission. I just kind of went off in the next town where we were headed. Mm -hmm. But I was so thankful that she came out of her house right then. But there were uh, adults and even two children that I asked. I said, I'm an artist, you know, would you mind if I took your picture? And the adults right away, you know, said yes. And then the, the children did too, but a funny thing happened. Um, the children that I saw and asked did not have an adult with them. And because it's, it's such a need over there for everything, there, it's, you know, it's a poverty stricken country. So mm -hmm. um, those children had, were near an adult and two times with the two children, an adult said, would you mind giving him a little something for him sitting for you? I and see. I said, I absolutely will. And so I did. Um, one of them was kind of strange because it, it harkened back to when our um, aide, when, when Donna, the one who took us on the trip, said, you will always be followed by people if you give one person some money. Okay. They will keep coming. So I gave this one young boy some money and in no time at all, another one was standing by me. <laughs> and I kind of ignored him, you know, I just let it go and said, okay, I'm, you know. So then I got on the bus. He was right outside my window. <laughs> and so one of our aides on the bus went around and said, get away from me. <laughs> Donna said, if you want to give them some money, give it to her to give to her organization. And trust okay. me, her organization, Zakat Foundation of America, they're a very good organization. It was a Say that again. Zakat, Z-A-K-A-T. Okay. Yeah. Um, they were, uh, it was a working trip for her and we were along on the, the working parts of it. She went to one town and they were supposed to do kind of like a, tell us what you did with the money we gave you to, to do yada yada. Mm -hmm. So there was someone who represented the education department, the military, um, just, just all the departments you can think of, they were there represented and they kind of gave her an update on what it is that they were doing mm. and a new list of things that they would like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of like around here, right? <laughs> In Chicago or whatever. Yeah, so, that's but, how it works. So the working part of it, I learned a lot and then meeting a lot of people helped me because I wanted to come back and start painting. And I, I've given myself a deadline of one painting a month. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do that for the next 12 months. So far, I'm on track if I get that one done. And right now, what is it? It's very early in August. I should be able to do that. So um, When you go there, being there in person compared to having your friend Donna take a picture mm -hmm. and bringing it back here to right. give to you, 
What does the experience as you're there, how does it add to the painting? Oh, it adds a lot. I, I mean, I, it's something about seeing the environment, seeing their face and actual, you know, 3D. You, you get a feel for everything, the texture, the skin, um, the, the lighting that was there that day. Um, and you're in the mood of the moment. Is it a place that is really in need, really poverty stricken? Some of them don't have water. I think a, a, a quarter of the country or a third of the country uh, is in real need for water. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's, a, you know, that's something we take for granted. Yes. The poorest of our poor are doing better than them. So that's one way to look at it. And you know that um, it, it's, a, and, but they're also friendly. I mean, really, like I said, you asked me about people saying, you know, you can take my picture. No one turned me down. They mm -hmm. were all very, you know, very welcoming. And um, I would go back. I really would. I thought it was a very, very welcoming, the capital, Accra, or some say Akara. Um, that has a lot of there's, there's urban things going on like the hotels for visitors and whatever mm -hmm. and people have because it's on the waterfront people have built property there you know and uh, but there's also a lot of the people who um, are very poor and they live in smaller areas so um, yeah when you went there okay so what did you pack as an artist to bring with you? How did you capture these images primarily so you could bring it back and work on them? Well, I had an icon, and I really like that because I don't know who uses those kind of cameras anymore unless you're <laughs> in the business, but a photographer down the hall loaned me an icon. And I also uh, use my own uh, Apple you know, iPhone. Okay. And I, I took a sketchbook, but I rarely used it. Okay. I rarely used it. Uh, the, I just felt like... I needed to take something that, uh, I, I needed to take a lot of pictures. That's that's the feeling I had. But I did take it in case I ever thought that, you know, I will do that. But I, I will tell you what my sketchbook did do, though. Um, one of our, the drivers, one of the drivers, I asked him about the translation of a word or something like that. He took my sketchbook and he kept it for maybe two days. And he put down all these common names and common words and he translated them for me in the sketchbook. Hmm. And so... Uh, you know, it, it, and it's different. I forgot what he said. T S E, I think, whatever that. <laughs> so that was the name of the language. I just remember him saying, "Now this is your me." For us, it's meh. Okay. <laughs> well, that <laughs> and, was helpful. Yeah, that was helpful. And then you know, just remembering his name was also something. So you know, but. So based on all these pictures you took, if you were to do paintings out of each, let's say, subject. How long would you be doing paintings? Like, did you take tons of pictures or? Yeah, it. I, I think that it will take me o over a year to do all the ones that I'm doing. I, I and, and then some, because I got a lot of photos, like, well, even some of these. Now, um, give you an example. This one here. Sometimes a picture will find something, you'll find something in a picture that you didn't see at first. She was a small figure at a well that was built in um, Mali. And uh, it was surrounded by, you know, people who were so happy because they had water and they were so glad about it. I saw her in that, that little point of light on her nose was just so intriguing to me. So I took just her and decided to do a, a portrait of her. I made her younger because I made her pregnant. I thought that's what I yeah. ate, so. I made her pregnant simply because of the, the way her hands were positioned. Okay. That led the whole picture and I went with that. And uh, so sometimes, like I said, you can see something, but you don't really see something that you want until later. Cause I didn't see that at first with her when I looked at the, at the photo. You, I see. It comes in, 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 in strange ways. Do you take notes on some of your situations or pictures mm -hmm. so that when you get home you can really yes, right. elaborate mm -hmm. yes you do because uh, again when you when you when you a spark comes to you you better document it at least i do because i know i'll forget <laughs> i know i will forget now these pictures that you've taken do the subjects ever really get a chance to see them no, again they okay. don't they don't sadly they don't and um I try to put a spin on it because, um, well, it, it needs to have a creative side, you know, and so I tried to do that with some part of it. 
you know, sometimes it's more than others. Like for instance, here using, um, you know, some symbols that you might find in fabric because fabric is a really big deal there. They all, nothing's off the rack. <laughs> so it's all fabric and people have uh, actually, uh, when we went, we took clothing and we had people to measure it and make us things that we took back, family members and whatever. Oh. I had something made myself. I had something for my mother made. I had a couple of friends, my son. So um, yeah, it's... Uh, Okay, so before you went to Ghana, mm -hmm. I bet you had a career before you went to Ghana this uh, year. <laughs> yes, I did. And if I understand correctly from my research and just from being in the art fairs, it's a pretty successful career. Yeah, I was an art teacher. Oh, is that where you started out from? That's okay. where I started from, yeah, in, in artists. I don't know if you meant to go back that far. No, I, I'm happy. Okay. Tell us about yeah. it. I was an art teacher for over 30 years. I started with K through eight and I ended up teaching high school my last nine years. And uh, I knew when I retired, I wanted to do something in art and I knew it would be with figures and portraits, but okay. I wasn't sure about the medium or about what my concentration would be. I just knew that it would have to deal with those. So um, Donna, it was, it was really kind of strange because she actually was a friend of my brother's and um, we, my brother and I lost another brother a few years back. Donna went to the funeral. I couldn't take my brother back to the airport because he was from North Carolina and I couldn't, I just didn't have time to do it. So she took him to the airport for me. On the way there, my brother's talking, oh, have you ever seen my sister's work? You really should see my sister's work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so that started the whole thing. Hmm. She hit me up, she wanted me to do something for her. And then after that, you know, she's showing me her pictures. I went to their offices and um, it, it just got started like that. And uh, so When you taught the art in school and that, of course you, you know, taught different types of art mediums, whatever. Right. What made you decide that pastels was where you wanted to start? That's funny because I don't ever remember, I didn't dwell on, maybe a bad choice of words, but we didn't really just concentrate with, with pastels because you have to have something, especially in the lower grades, that will um, be cost effective, you know what I'm saying? Right. And those things are expensive. Okay. I mean, the true pastels. I mean, I, I guess you could buy, you know, uh, a elementary brand or something like that, but uh, it, it's kind of messy. And I think it's more for a seasoned artist. So, and again, I didn't really get into them until I, you know, just been trying to find myself, so to speak, after retirement. I took one of Mary Kay's sessions and I was hooked. Absolutely hooked. The brilliance of the color, uh, they're forgiving beyond any other medium I can think of. Um, and uh, the blending, it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, medium to work with. And so these are some of the ones I have, although I think my studio mates have more, but <laughs> my plans are to get more. Pa pastel pencils are something that I did not start with. This is within the last year, and I absolutely love these. The woman in the blue is um, a lot of pastel pencil there. I start with pastels, and then I will uh, lay it in with an alcohol wash to kind of seal it. It, becomes, it doesn't become as movable then, and then it gives you a nice base to work on. And as you can see, I'm working on the one on the easel with blue on orange. The orange was the undercover color. And uh, that's really good because blue and orange are complements and complementing colors really, really work, work well together when you're uh, laying in a piece. Tell me about some of the awards you may have won because I suspect oh, you've won a few here yeah, and there. Yeah, I did. There's some over here, follow me over here. And on, and on the board over there, but these, these are, I guess, more recent. Uh, I've been really blessed to have a number of uh, ads, not ads, <laughs> stories that were done in the newspaper, the local newspaper. Uh -huh. And um, this one was from Tallgrass last year. I won their honorary award. Um, that's a big deal. It's for their, the Bow Arts Ball is their biggest fundraiser and they uh, give an award to an artist and I won it last year. 
And this is, I'm in Chicago Pastel Painters. And um, I got third place for a piece that was there. So, and... Um, what kind of places do you go to with your paintings? It's just like art fairs or yeah. no, commissions I or I what? I only do Park Forest Art Fair. Uh, really? And art fair is, it's a lot of work. And, it, it, you know, if I told my son the minute he stops helping me, I'm out of it. <laughs> it's just the setup, schlepping all that stuff everywhere. Yes. And you don't, you, you can't afford for anything to break. I mean, you know, you need the inventory, so... So how do you sell your paintings then? Okay, well, it helps that I have I go to I go to local art shows, and it helps to have the web, website. Oh, that helps okay. a lot. What's your website? Um, JeanLewisFineArt.com. Okay. And um, but about a year or so after I started with the I, the notion of selling, I was going to local art fairs, art shows in Chicago and around here in the South Suburbs. And I tried my first out-of-state fair and got it got uh, accepted in Louisville, Kentucky. Hmm. And uh, so when I got into that one, I, I said I like this. So I went to their opening. I flew to the opening, and I was there for that opening. And then I came back the next day, and I thought this is really fun. <laughs> and so since then, I have been in art shows from Laguna Beach, California. Mm -hmm all the way to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and a lot of places in between. They, you know, my work has been accepted whenever they have a call for portraits or figurative, and then you, you submit along with a fee, and then after a week or so, they let you know if you made it in, mm -hmm. and I've been blessed to be in quite a few, quite a few. So what's the difference between an art show versus our art fair? Well, the fair is, is packing the truck. <laughs> oh, okay. Big difference, whereas an art show, they might choose two. Oh, so you only have a certain number of I see. Mm -hmm. But, okay. you know, I never look at it as if I don't sell anything or don't win anything, right. that it's a loss because you've made a connection. And I have quite a few connections now, and that's what gets your name out there. Part of but you have the opportunity from being there to mm -hmm. meet prospective patrons and sell. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Interesting. And, and, and you don't really sell a whole lot at those shows, at least I haven't. But when it happens, oh my goodness, in Highland Park, I think it was, I think it was Highland Park uh, a couple years ago, I was at the opening and then the next day, uh, Chicago Pastel Painters called me and said, there was a couple here from out of town and they bought your piece. He said, you've got to ship it to California. Do okay. you know the feeling that gives <laughs> you? <laughs> and it was wonderful because um, it, well, it, I had to ship it to his, his job, I remember that. And I bought a pastel box because those are special. They, you really need the cushioning and mm -hmm. all of that. And I found, I found out from talking to the, the guy that they were from South Africa. And my girl that they bought was from Africa. And I like it. Oh. Whoa, you get that little feeling, you know. How oh, neat. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Huh. You know, it really was. So um, I, uh, I have been blessed in getting um, a, a lot of work out there. And being invited recently, especially to um to do different things that i never thought years ago i would when i was giving out detentions in home room <laughs> i never thought i would have anything like this going on you know <laughs> so um do you think you'll be going back to ghana if i'm asked i would like to go with that group mm -hmm. because donna knows so much oh my goodness we went to a marketplace <laughs> and she knew all about the ins and outs of how they work and so I said, the, the guy was going to sell me something. And I said, wait a minute, let me go get down. I want got her. She's like, no, we can do that. And we, we can buy that in the United States. We don't need that. No, your price is too high. She went down this whole list of what was wrong. Not that I wanted him to feel bad, but I didn't right. want to be taken either. Exactly. You know? And so um, he got a sale. But she also read him the right, <laughs> the right act. <laughs> so. Well, that's part of being new. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, so. thank you so much for your time and taking oh. some time out to show us your works thank and talk you. to us a little bit. And we look forward to seeing you at the art fair on September 16th and 17th, 17th right. in Park Forest. Park Forest See you there. All right.